Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Unarmored Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Mario P. Fields. And first of all, before I introduce our guest, thank you for supporting this podcast. I mean, the, the, the statistics, the numbers are amazing. I was just hoping to get one follower, one download, and one view in the first 12 months. And you guys have broke that. But let's get to the real thing at hand, right? Our guest today is Allison Gomez. She goes by Ali Gomi. She's a social media influencer. She's a cancer survivor. And I've known her since she was like 12 years old, plus two years on that, 14. And it's it's kind of it's kind of awesome to be interviewing her. And her family's amazing. Her dad and mom are amazing. Dad served in the Marines for about 5,000 years. But anyway, Allie, you mind if I call you Allie? That's fine. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to Unarmored Talk Podcast. Tell the listeners and viewers a little bit about yourself. Hi guys. So as you said, go by Ali Gomi. Oh God, it's like so much stuff. I don't even know where, where to begin, but um, okay. So my dad was in the military and I guess with that whole thing, you kind of like grow up around the whole military family thing. And it's kind of like almost like program into you. Right. Yeah. And so my whole life I'm like, well, he was in the Marine Corps, but I'm a girl. I'm not saying girls can't do Marine Corps stuff. But like for me, I'm like, that's, that's too hardcore. Let me like, you know, so I was like, you know, let's do the Navy, whatever. So, um, you know, at a really young age, I decided I didn't want to go to college. Like military was for me, you know, something, sometimes you have this feeling where like you want to give more, you know what I mean? Like you want to do something that you feel like it's beneficial to more than just yourself. Yeah. And I feel like with the military, it kind of gives you that feeling. And so at a young age, I wanted to join and I ended up going to boot camp and getting sick. And then throughout that process, I ended up getting married at 19. I'm now divorced at the age 26 and um I don't know a lot of things have happened and a lot of things are going way differently and better than I ever imagined them to be um I've walked in New York Fashion Week in 2019 and in 2020 and over the last five years I've worked in film so a lot of things yeah and yeah. like you said media um I don't even know how that happened I guess TikTok just blew up and I blew up along with it. I don't, honestly, I don't even know how that happened, but I'll, I'll take it. That's normally how it happens. You know, we got <laughs> something. We got something in common, um, a little bit. I mean, we, so I got married at nineteen. I was I was nineteen. No way. Nicole and I, yeah, yeah. Nicole and I, I was, okay. I was nineteen. Mm -hmm. You didn't know that, did you? I didn't know that. No. Yeah, nineteen years old when I uh, persuaded her to marry this little Lance mm -hmm. Corporal. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> but let's get let's get right into it. I mean. Yeah. You know, you mentioned that, you know, you grew up in a family of service, right? Dad served our nation in the United States Marines. You know, you mm -hmm. were like, you know, as a child, it's kind of rough, I believe, on, on you more than the, the parent. But so you joined the Navy, I take it, right? So you joined the Navy, you're in boot camp, mm -hmm. and you don't just get sick. You get diagnosed with cancer in boot camp. Yes, exactly. Talk, talk, talk to us about, about that. So it's so wild because my entire life I've, I've been healthy. I mean, mind you, I did eat a lot of fast food, you know, so I do have some unhealthy habits, but my whole life I never had anything worse than like a common cold. I ran cross country, track, soccer, so I was always fit. And so honestly, when I was going to boot camp, like that was the most exciting part to me. I'm like, I'm going to get paid to work out. Are you kidding me? Like, I was so excited. And so it was almost like... And I went in November and it was uh, at the Great Lakes. So it was snowing there. It was cold. And so we were sleeping with these really thick wool blankets. And it was about three, four weeks in. And I kept waking up with a swollen face. And my whole face was like, people were actually very mean. They're like, oh my God, you look like a marshmallow face. Like, that's how bad it was. Like, I could not see. And so about a, like a whole week went on and it just kept progressively getting worse. And I told my RDC, which is basically like a drill instructor, right. um, you know, Hey, something's wrong. I think I'm having allergic reaction to the wool blanket. So it was on a Friday. He sent me to go get tested. They did all these testings. Nothing came back. So they're like, you know, tomorrow fast, don't eat. We'll do more testing. Nothing. Then it's Sunday. And I was actually very lucky to have like an RDC that actually cared. So I know there's a lot of drill instructors that don't actually care about the beings, you know, the people, I guess. You know what I mean? A lot of them come off harsh. I'm not saying they're all harsh. Right. But my, like, I came back and he's like, so did they figure out what's wrong with you? And I'm like, no, they can't figure it out. They just sent me back. And he was like, you go tell them that I said they better figure it out. So they had to actually send me off base, 
load me up into an ambulance, which was weird. Cause like I was perfectly like conscious and I could walk and they're like, we have to strap you into the ambulance. And I'm like, okay. So they had to bring me off base to see a specialist. And the guy just looked at me and he was like, you know what? I think the swelling is happening because there's probably something in your chest. That's like stopping the, the blood flow from like going down. So we get into a chest x-ray and he finds a three by four inch mass growing against my heart. I mean, I don't know how well I can see, but I have a scar right here from my biopsy. And so that was um, in Chicago. They actually ended up sending me to Northwestern in Chicago. They had to pull me from boot camp, um, And I spent two weeks at Northwestern doing my first cycle of chemotherapy. Wow. Mm -hmm. so, so the interesting thing is, the interesting thing is you're so positive. I mean, mm -hmm. I, you know, re before we went live, I went through all of your social media platforms and you're just so positive. And, and I think that some people are like, Oh man, she's positive. It, it, she was just probably like, all right, I got cancer. Let's go. Let's go. Right. Mm -hmm. but, but was that your response when they finally told you, you have this mass growing right. in your heart and now you're getting, you know, medically transferred. What, right. what, went through your mind when that I don't think you were laughing about that well and the thing is, is I was diagnosed twice like I my initial diagnosis was at 19 at boot camp then I did six cycles of chemo and my chemo was five days long like five continuous days I was hooked up I had a shower like hooked up to the chemo and I, I went every three weeks six times and my cancer returned again three months later which was really funny because when it did clear up I was so excited to go back to the Navy because my recruiter, thankfully, was still in Jacksonville. And he was like, all you got to do is submit all your medical paperwork and we'll submit it. We yeah. can go to boot camp, do this again. And we're getting all prepared. It's only been three months. And what do you know? My cancer came back. And that's kind of when I realized, like, holy cow, like, maybe, like, the military is not for me. Like, I tried. I got stopped. I tried again. I got stopped again. It was kind of like God's trying to tell me, like, this is not my path, I think. Did you? And that's. It, did you did you feel depressed or did you feel like man I'm I'm failing or what the heck? I think the very first time I didn't even cry. Like I remember being in the hospital, um, and I remember like when they first you know got me and did my biopsy or whatever. I remember just like my they called my parents. My parents had to fly from North Carolina all the way to Chicago, and they we didn't even know if it was cancer yet. We hadn't gotten the biopsy results. I had just called her, telling her before surgery, like they don't know what it is. I right. got pulled from camp and I think it was a lot harder on my parents and on me like I didn't even cry I don't think for the first couple of weeks I think I was so just like in shock that yeah. I, I have time and it was a an aggressive growing cancer so we had to start chemo immediately I never had time to process it it was like mm -hmm. you got this okay let's start and so I don't really think I ever had time to deal with it or think about it the first time and then Honestly, I think that's why I got cancer a second time, because I think the first time I got it, I didn't let it change me or affect me at all. I was right. like, okay, back to life. But I went back to my, my, my like civilian job at Olive Garden while I was talking to my recruiter. And I was like, let me get my money. Let me go back to boot camp. Let me act like nothing happened. And I think that's why I got cancer again, because I was like, maybe I, I didn't do what I was supposed to do with that journey. And that's why I decided to make a YouTube and share it. Because I'm like, maybe... Maybe that's why, you know, maybe I'm supposed to help other people. Maybe it's not about me. Maybe it's about someone else, you know, that needs right. positive light, you know, from someone who's going through the same thing that they that, are. That That's interesting how that's interesting how you took a, a challenge while living and, and you didn't go, oh, woe is me. I, you know, oh, oh, my God. You said, wait a minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. The first time I got diagnosed, maybe it was a sign I need to help other people. Mm -hmm. I missed it. Second time I get diagnosed, okay, maybe yeah. I need to really help other people. That, yes, that was kind that of like is, a wake. That you know, that is what a lesson for for other folks who who currently are going through this situation. And mm -hmm. you got you know, we don't know the future, right? We can only imagine that they someone's getting diagnosed with with that today. And what did you? What was the type of cancer that you got diagnosed oh. with? So the type of cancer I have, so there's two type, two types of blood cancer. I'm sure everyone knows leukemia and then there's lymphoma. So lymphoma is a blood cancer. There's non-Hodgkin's and Hodgkin's. So there's just two types. And I had um, non-Hodgkin's and mine was medial stinal, which means it grows in your chest. And like I said, you know, mine was growing against my heart. And that explains why my face was swelling. Cause as the doctor explained it, 
you have a super vena cava, which is the biggest vein in your body. It goes from your heart all the way to like your brain and it lets all the blood flow. It's about as thick as your thumb, this vein. And so I guess when I was laying down at night, the, the giant like tumor in my chest was stopping the blood flow. And right. that's why my falling up. So I, like I said, I was lucky enough that that guy could just look at me and be like, Hey, I think it's this, let's get a chest x-ray. Like I got lucky, honestly. But no, I, I think the big thing was, is like, I felt very hopeless for myself. Mm -hmm. And I think I wanted to feel like, well, I can't do anything with myself. Like, oh, well, maybe, maybe I can help somebody else kind of thing. It was like, I felt like if I can't help me, maybe I can help somebody else kind of, it was kind of like almost like a selfish thing in a weird way. It was like not to help other people. It's kind of like to help me help other people. If that, if that makes any sense. I don't know if it does. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, I mean, we all have a, our own reactions to a life event, but it's, yeah. just, but, um, and that, and that was yours is I can't, I, I can't help me. So let me help others, which is, which actually is a pretty good one. Just my, my belief. Um, uh, so, 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 you know, so now here we are, you know, right. So now you, you, you got the second diagnosis. You're like, all right, I can't join the Navy. I can't serve the United States of America mm -hmm. through the Navy. I'm going to help other people. And you become the social media influencer. Um, what other challenges that, that your fans and followers may not see that you deal with mm -hmm. daily? Right. And I think um, I realized that because, you know, I would vlog, I would, what I would do is like, I would vlog every single day. And then at the end of the week, I would put it all together and just like upload a weekly vlog. Okay. And that's, I wanted to be vulnerable. I wanted to show people my blood transfusions, my bone marrow transplant, my radiation, like everything. I wanted to be very transparent. And I think, oh man, this is so much. Sorry. No, that's, <laughs> but, that's fine. This is unarmored talk. Got your question. I'm like so like overwhelmed right now. I'm sorry. Can you? <laughs> no, that's just, that's fine. This is this is you know this is how it is. I mean, you you know, and that's why I always appreciate the select the the, the select few viewers. I mean, uh, guests who have the courage to come on because yeah. this, is, this is a platform. You got to remove your armor, and you don't know what I'm going to ask. And they're that's very true. they're very deep and pointed and accurate questions. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because I, I believe, you know, Ali, I believe again. I looked at all your vid a lot of your videos, your profiles, and everything, and 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 I I just my belief that you see this positive young lady who who has accepted this this very serious disease diagnosis, right? And and they they watch your blogs and your videos, but there's still things that they don't see that you battle, with. right? Yeah, and, so. I think I kicked myself later for this because I felt like I wasn't being a hundred percent transparent. I think a lot of the time I was putting too much, I think it's good to have good energy. And I think that's why I put so much good energy out there. Cause I wanted people to feel it to the screen and get it. But I think I messed up there too, because I wasn't being a hundred percent true to my audience. Like yeah. I made it sometimes look easier than it was. And it was not easy. And I go back and I watch my vlogs and I'm like, I do not remember being that easy. Like it was very, very, very difficult. And I think I, I was trying to like be so much as a positive outlook for people. I didn't really show the truth hundred percent, which I wish honestly I would have because you know, it's not always rainbows and, and unicorns, you right. know, is it? Um, and I, I actually went back and watched one of my videos recently. It was, um, I picked up the camera one night. I was crying all night. I decided to pick up the video camera. And it was after my second time with cancer, I was going for my first checkup. So the feelings going through my head is, oh my God, if I have cancer for a third time, I cannot do this. And I think that's what I'm dealing with is I knew that if it came back again, I was like, nope, nope, I'm not, I'm not doing it. And I was watching it and it's so funny how my feelings now have changed. Like I understand back then going through cancer, then going through cancer and then imagine going through cancer again. You know, you, why would you want to do that? Right? right. But now five years later, if I got diagnosed right now, best believe I would do it. Like life is too good to just throw in the towel, nice. especially knowing like what's, what's next, you know, it's not worth it. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, are you, wait, what, you, what, you're going to have to invoice me so I can pay you for some of these. No. <laughs> You know, you guys heard it. You know, you heard from from Ali Gomi. You know, she said life 
life is wonderful. It's no matter what you wow, well, no matter what you deal with, it's not worth throwing in in the towel. Looking back now, looking back, you're 26 years old. Again, I've known you since you were two years old. But looking <laughs> one, one. Yeah, we go one. No, but but looking back, reflecting back. What, what could you tell the folks who are listening and, and, and watching this uh, episode? What did you learn looking back? I think a lot of people need to notice, and this is this is the thing for me, is, you know, I had a husband at the time, and I have parents, and I have sisters. I understand, and I, like I said, I've watched one of your other podcasts um, where this lady was talking about how our father passed from cancer and then her mother passed. And it's, it's kind of interesting to see the other perspective of, like, the caregiver side instead mm-hmm. of being on the side of the sick one. Um and I think that, like, it's, it's like, sorry, there's so much emotion and so much thoughts right now. I just, I don't even know where to begin or share with you guys. But I think it's, it's important to, like, realize there's, there's more. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. But, like, don't, just because it's so bad right now. And, like, I, I was explaining, you can explain it in easier ways. Like, say, a boyfriend, right? You're with a boyfriend. And things are bad but you can't break up with them because you don't know what's next and you're like oh there's no one else for me like I can't but if I think back to five ten years ago about any other ex-boyfriend I have it's like I did make it out like I there's more and it's the same with cancer with any type of sickness it's like when you're going through it of course you're like oh this is the worst there's nothing after this it's never gonna get better but that's just how it feels in that moment anytime you look back you realize wow like I'm here now I, I did it like you have to remember or think that like there there is always more and that's kind of like a thought like that you have to remember especially in bad times because it's obviously very difficult like you can get through it like you can it's it's literally possible anything that you set your mind to you can do it and that's honestly the most important thing to remember is to not get involved and swallowed up by how you feel and what you're going through at the moment you just have to know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel you know you just have to have faith that's the biggest thing yeah you you know ladies and gentlemen emotions and feelings are natural to human beings but to think it takes effort and Allie just done it I mean you just you just articulated well that you thought through uh, what was going on and look at the results today in uh, 2021 uh, how can I, I? I mean, you already have like millions of followers, but you're going to get some new ones. So, how can people find you on social media? So, um, as you said, Allison Gomez, but I go by Ali Gomi. Um, I have YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. It's all under Ali Gomi. Um, if you're looking, I mean, and honestly, I need to get back on my YouTube game because it's been a while. But <laughs> um, I was going to say something. Talk, but I, <laughs> to create like more content because and it was weird it was like last week I went through there's like when you're on YouTube you can select un or unread comments or not reply to comments and there was like hundreds and I was like and they're from like years ago I'm like I'm such a bad person I didn't reply to nobody and I was reading through all these people and it was like I'm going through treatment tomorrow I'm starting treatment tomorrow and it was kind of nice to reply like a year later because I'm like oh my God, are you in remission now? Like, how are you? You know what I mean? So I really want to jump back on YouTube because I think YouTube, I only have like 2,000 followers. But that's 2,000 people that like, even if it was one person, I think that's what helped me get through my cancer stuff was like, knowing if I could help one person, that is enough. And that's why I felt like that's kind of what kept me alive through all of it is like, like trying to help somebody else, try to get the focus off me and focus on somebody else. And that's what, that's what helped me. Ladies and gentlemen, you get a chance. You guys got to subscribe to her YouTube channel. Get on TikTok if you're on it or Instagram. Follow her. She's an amazing young lady. She's also my, my neighbor. So that's cool. So I get to, I get to get a blast of Allie like every every single week if I want. Uh, but mm-hmm. um, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for removing your armor and talking about a serious topic. And um, and I can say this. I love you and your family because you guys are like family to me. Yes, and, you're family. Yeah. And then next time you come over, we'll make sure we have some chicken adobo for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We better. Yeah. Write that down. Better not be lying either. No, no, I, I'll, I'll convince Nicole. But uh, hey, ladies, okay. ladies, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, we'll see you later.